All right, friends, welcome to the shop. Today, we're going to be unraveling the mysteries of the derailleur. So I hear from a lot of you that you don't understand the derailleurs, that you'd rather take it into a shop to have it adjusted. And albeit that's a good idea, I wanna unravel some of those mysteries. We'll start with the foundation and go right to taking care and maintaining your derailleur. So we're gonna start with the foundation. And I'm assuming a lot of you have heard the story of the wise man building his house upon the rock, as opposed to the foolish man who built it upon the sand. Your foundation, your rock, in setting up your derailleur is this. Now this is on a vintage steel bike. We got a nice Richie dropout, but it's your derailleur hanger. If this is wrong, your foundation will never be right and you will always have problems with your derailleur. Now, why is your derailleur hanger the foundation? The reason is if your derailleur hanger is not aligned with the cogs on your cassette, then every shift will slowly get further and further out of alignment and you'll always have clicking issues up and down shifting and problems with your derailleur. The foundation of your derailleur setup is with your derailleur hanger. So you may ask, how do I make sure then that my derailleur hanger is aligned with my cassette? Now the way I do this is with a tool called a derailleur hanger alignment gauge. Now most of you are not going to have a tool like this and I don't say you need to buy a tool like this to check your alignment. Most shops should have such a tool. On most newer bikes, the derailleur hanger is a separate piece. It's made out of aluminum typically, and it's made to fail before your derailleur fails. With the derailleur hanger alignment gauge attached, what I do then is I will set, I'll normally find the valve to keep my alignment. I don't want the trueness of the wheel to be a problem for me. I'll set the gauge with the extension so that it touches the rim at the valve. And as I go around the wheel, I want to check to see that, that we're not running into issues. I'm seeing here, I'm out of alignment by about five millimeters. So I'm, I'll just, I'll just pull on the, on the bar and what that will do, that will straighten it out here a little more. Go back to where I started and just check. I'm good. As I come down to here, now I'm even more off. So I'm gonna adjust out. I may need to adjust this. around up here, I'm seeing I've got good alignment there now. Checking the alignment here, I'm about five millimeters off. I'm gonna move this out of the way and just bend it in a smidge. I'm doing better, doing good, good. A little off up here. We're pretty good now. So we've set our foundation. Now, as I mentioned before, you may have a removable derailleur hanger, such as this bike has. And these, if your derailleur hanger is bent or broken, replacing this sometimes fixes the problem. Typically, the frame 
dropout part of the, the bike is in alignment still. It's a matter of the derailleur hanger itself being bent. Now you can do what I just did with the steel bike. You can adjust and tweak the alignment of the derailleur hanger with the derailleur hanger alignment tool, but this also weakens your derailleur hanger. It may be best that you just change it out. Now, if you do have a replaceable derailleur hanger and the one that you have is slightly bent, you could put it on a hard surface and try to pound it flat. I do recommend though that this could damage it. It could break it completely, but it might be able to get things straight and align for you for that foundation. But I do recommend that if you do have a bent one, these are meant to be replaced. Go ahead, try to find it either in your shop or online. You may be able to find a replacement derailleur hanger for a few dollars and get that derailleur alignment foundation correct. With your foundation set, you're ready to attach your derailleur. Now for this next step of setting up the limit screws on your derailleur, I'm gonna put a link up here in the corner of the video that will take you to another video that I did that walks you through the steps of setting up your derailleur limit screws correctly. Now that the limit screws are set on your derailleur such that the pulley wheels are in a line with the smallest tooth chain ring on your cassette, you're ready for the next step. And that is attaching the cable with the shifter in its lowest tension position and tightening that cable so it's tight and attaching it completely to your derailleur. Now with these first two steps done, aligning the derailleur hanger and setting up the limit screws correctly on your derailleur, you should be pretty close. And a quick run through the gears of the bike should tell you if you're on or not. You can tell I'm not quite there yet, but I'm almost there on some of these. So my tension is just a little slack from what I need. And that's where the little tool called, yeah, you can see, see this? This is wanting to jump off. So this is telling my tension is not quite what it needs to be. I need to pull it just a little tighter. Now the next step is actually to adjust the tension on your derailleur cable. We know that from this derailleur that we're slightly too loose and so we want to increase the tension slightly and that's done this is called a barrel adjuster the barrel adjuster when turned when screwed in so going clockwise reduces tension you can see that as i screw this in the barrel adjuster goes in when i screw it out the little screw in the shifter moves out and increases the tension. And that's what we want in this case. We want to increase the tension on the cable to move that derailleur just slightly further. While you're shifting, you can actually turn and adjust this barrel adjuster to see if it tunes the shifting just right. So that's what we're going to do now. So as I'm turning the gears, I'm now turning All right, see, now I've turned it enough that it drops in there. So let's check everything. Cycle through all of the gears. Make sure that it shifts now. One, two, three, four. Yes, much better. So with these three steps, aligning your derailleur hanger, setting your limit screws, and adjusting the barrel adjusters to fine tune the cable tension, your rear derailleur should be set up just right. Now, how do you keep that set up correct? One, don't lay your bike down on the drive side. Anytime that this gets bumped, slowly pushes your derailleur hanger out of alignment. So if you're going to lay down your bike, lay it down on the non-drive side. If things start to be out of alignment, you can do that field alignment I mentioned of just adjusting straight using the derailleur on it. You can also 
remove your derailleur with still the chain and the cable attached and do the alignment I just did, or a shop can do that for you with your derailleur hanger. You can also remove the wheel and replace the derailleur hanger if you have a replaceable derailleur hanger without removing your chain or the cable and, and adjusting your shifting. You can do all of those things, but every time you make some major changes, you will have to then make sure the tension's correct using the barrel adjusters and the limit screws sometimes will loosen up and change. If you've just put a new cable in, you want to continually increase the tension on your cable. As you go, those cables will stretch slightly on these new ones and will take some of that tension out that you've lost and your shifting may, may shift just slightly and you may need to increase the tension as the cable kind of settles into its correct length. All of those things will help you to keep your derailleur working properly. It's really simple though, it's those three steps. The foundation with your derailleur hanger, then setting the limit screws correctly, and then adjusting the tension, fine tuning the tension on your cable, and you should be set and good to go. So I hope I've uncovered for you some of the mysteries of uh, your rear derailleur. I hope this video has helped you. If you have any other tips or questions, let me know in the comments below. And as always, look for opportunities to give those old things new life. Don't be afraid to try some of this yourself. And I'll see you on the next video. Ciao.